In the Bhagavad Gita, Bhagavan Krishna tells us something that we don't hear that often. He says, to you who have overcome the carping spirit, I shall now reveal wisdom sublime, grasping it with your mind and perceiving it by intuitive realization, you shall escape the evils of delusion. You who have overcome the carping spirit. It's so common to complain. Most of us do it or think it at least. And why does Krishna make such a big thing about it? The impulse to judge, to criticize, to blame your neighbor, your boss, the government, the weather. Oh, I did miss your birthday, but it was your fault. You didn't remind me. How many thoughts like this have gone through our minds? A healthy sense of humor is kindly to laugh with people, to not at people, and to laugh at ourselves and the very strange and funny human condition that we all find ourselves in and not to take ourselves too seriously. But so much of humor today is, it puts down other people, isn't it? You know, just most of the, the comedies on TV. Sri Yukteswar likened it to cutting off the heads of everyone around you to make yourself look taller. Recently, we started watching a, a comedy like this, and it was very well written, very witty, great actors. And after a few minutes, we just had to turn it off because people just spent all their time complaining about other people. It wasn't at all funny to us. It was rather sad. And a whole family or a whole society can can think in this way and relate to each other in this way, not even aware of it. And every conversation becomes a, a debate, a, a competition with the other person. Someone who had been living in France told me that in, in her neighborhood that when she, you know, greeted people, you know, most of them would say, good morning, and then they would start complaining. And that was just the way of sharing in that particular town, at least. And Swamiji spoke of when he first would visit Italy, and he would give lectures there. People would come and politely listen. But he said what they really wanted to do was to talk to him personally afterwards and to tell him their troubles, and to ask for spiritual advice. And he would make a very modest suggestion to them. And the typical response would be, oh, no, 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 that's too difficult. I can't do that. Really, they didn't want to change. They didn't want to stop complaining. They just wanted someone to listen to their complaints. And I think we all know somebody a little bit like that. And there's a lesson here also for all of us, for yogis who are trying to improve themselves. Um, years ago at Ananda Village, I would, I would walk home from work with, uh, with a couple of friends, and we would have interesting conversations. And, uh, and during one of them, 
Naya Swami Asha said to me, you know, I've, I've been reflecting and it seems like our conversations lately have become a little bit sarcastic and, and let's change that. And I realized, she pointed out, I realized that I was, you know, sort of for the sake of being funny, I was starting to criticize other people and I wasn't even aware of it. And when we act in certain ways enough times, it becomes a habit. And establishing habits, they become an attitude, a way of life and a way of thinking that we just take for granted. And this is for better or worse. And it's good for us to, to introspect, to make a list of some of the things that happened to us yesterday. And what was our reaction to each of those things? You know, did we, did we, our first reaction, you know, sort of fear the worst? Or did we see the, the silver lining in the gray cloud? Did we see the, the glass that was half full or half empty? And what about the people around us? How do they see the world? Is the glass half full or half empty? And it's a very good introspection for us to see ourselves more clearly and how we think and to be more aware of our environment as well and how, how can we be that glass half full kind of person and live in positivity. Swami Kriyananda said that a good art critic is seldom a good creative artist. Critical attitude paralyzes creativity. Intellect separates, analyzes. Intellect lacks intuition's flow, which descends smoothly like a river from the superconscious. And this carping, criticizing spirit comes from, from the intellect. Intuition comes from meditation when we open ourselves to the superconscious. Intuition, Yoganandaji said, is the soul's power to know God. The soul's power to know God is intuition. We can't know God with the intellect, with the mind. Swami Kriyananda, as a young man, saw himself as very intellectual, critical, doubting. When I met him many years later, when he was 45 years old, he was a totally different person. He depended on intuition and he tapped into an incredible source of creativity by living intuitively. And how did he develop that intuition? First and foremost, of course, by meditation, by devotion. He said, if you eat your dinner and then run, how do you expect to enjoy what you've eaten? Your enjoyment will increase if you rest a little afterwards. The same is true for meditation. Don't jump up the moment you're done with your technique, your kriya or hong sa. Sit still a while. Enjoy the inner peace. Prolong and deepen as much as possible the peaceful after effects of practicing the techniques. That is how intuition is developed. And then be willing to act. Don't just keep it all in your mind. Saint Francis, as a young man, felt a call to follow the example of Christ. And he went into a, a little church that was in ruins, but it still had an altar and he still had a, a cross representing Christ and he prayed before the cross. 
and he asked Christ for guidance to, to dedicate his life, to, to give him the steps to follow in his life's path. And the message that came to him was, rebuild my church, which as you can see has fallen into ruin. And St. Francis thought, well, yeah, he looked around, this little church was in ruins, and so I guess that's what I'm supposed to do. I don't know anything about building churches, but, uh, you know, he put his heart and soul into it. He sort of got a few donations for, for stone and bricks, and, and he was just so positive and joyful. He would attract to him a few other young men who would help him with it. And what Christ was referring to is the whole Catholic Church at that time was corrupt and most people had turned away and were not believing. And meanwhile, Francis joyfully rebuilt that chapel and just by being joyful, he attracted others and he brought people back to a simple faith, a simple humility, and eventually that transformed the entire church. And so by acting on simple guidance, at first he opened himself to the superconscious, he opened himself to that intuition, just by putting one foot in front of the other. We may not go, we may not know where a certain direction is taking us, but we know it's the right direction. Just put one foot in front of the other. As uh, recently Naya Swami Jyotish shared the story of when he first met Swami Kriyananda. And Swamiji said, you know, I've, we're doing a project here, maybe you can help us. And they were, they were mailing envelopes and getting them ready, and Jyotish said, sure. And he said he didn't realize that the project that Swamiji asked him to help with would continue for the next 60 years almost of his life. And so we don't know the outcome, but when we know it's the right thing, give it full energy. And the more that we, the more that we look within, and the more that we're in humility, we're open to receive, then the more intuition will come, will give us ideas, and the more solutions will come from the divine. Thank you. So Swami is telling us to be childlike, not childish, but childlike. And you know, if we think that's pretty simple philosophy, but childish, of course, would be very self-involved, would be emotionally immature, would throw tantrums when we don't get what we want, so clearly that's not what Jesus is talking about, but childlike, open-hearted trust, open-hearted faith that we will be taken care of, that we will be guided, that we will be fine. That's the open-hearted trust and faith of a child that Jesus was talking about. And as Keshava said, the intellect tries to get in the way of that. The ego loves the intellect but the soul loves the joy and faith of a child. Um, if you think of, let's say, a mango, people can describe to you the color of the mango, the nutrition, nutritional qualities of a mango, where it's grown, where they're from, and all of this, and you can learn all these facts about the mango, how many are grown, but until you taste a mango, you don't know what a mango is. So it's also the same thing for the spiritual path and for our spiritual progress. I know that for about 15 years, I was an avid reader about all different kinds of spiritual paths and directions and guidance. And I really thought I was progressing spiritually because I was doing so much reading. And you know, my, my intellect was quite pleased with myself that I was going through so many books. And, you know, my ego thought, well, that's good, you can comprehend so many complex topics. And yet, I was not changing. 
you know, I was trying to overcome impatience or a reaction of anger very easily. And I just realized after 15 years of doing this, I really wasn't changing. And then, by God's grace, I ended up at Ananda. And, you know, within a very short few months after I started to meditate, lo and behold, I started to change. And even though I don't think I was having any deep communion with God yet, the fact that I was changing and the fact that my life and my, my consciousness was just becoming more simple, instead of wanting all these complex ideas, I just wanted to get, I tried to get still with Hong Sa, just like, how can I get still? And just even that aspiration for stillness and inner peace, I'd always been so restless. Just that, that beginning of a taste of inner peace was the carrot that just kept me going in that direction for a long time. And so when we think we're making progress, sometimes we're just spinning in circles. I realized I was just spinning in circles. And why is that? Because as Master said, our spines are spiritually paralyzed. And how is that? It's because the cosmic energy that's entering into each of us as humans, having this nervous system, you know, in an unenlightened state, all that energy is just flying out through the senses with all our different desires and judgments and likes and dislikes and attachments and all these ways that the energy, we can't have the energy moving in one direction enough to take us forward. And so that's why the techniques of this path, they help us start to redirect the energy into our center and draw it upward into more of an uplifted state where we can perceive that guidance from Divine Mother, the intuition that Keshav is talking about. In this book, Swami also talks about the innocence of the ignorant and the innocence of the wise. So the innocence of the ignorant is that we could compare it with the child again. He has not had to fight the battles of life. He has not had his heart broken. He has not been hurt. He has not perhaps had his dreams crushed somewhere. So his, his innocence is also of naivety. But think of the saints, you know, of master, of... of uh, uh, innocence of wisdom who have they themselves have communed with the source of all creation. They have communed with God's light. They have communed with the energy that flows into each of us. And they can see the difference between delusion and spiritual reality. Yogananda used to go into the movie theaters and he would, you know, have some disciples with him, and he would say, you know, look at the movie screen. You've got trees, you've got a lake, you've got people, you know, and they all look very different on the, the screen. But he says, look back at the light. The light is producing the mountains, the stream, the people. And for him, he's, somebody said, are you enjoying the movie, Master? He said, oh, yes, I'm enjoying the cosmic movie so he can, he can see the light that is producing all of these infinite number of manifestations in this world and in the, in the universe. And so if they understand that there is only one source of all that is, Yogananda also uses the example of the gas burner, the, gas, the flames on a gas burner. They all look separate, but you open the cupboard and look under and there's the... There's the gas tank. It's just one source. Or all these lights look different and the street lights look different. It's one source of power coming through. So the saints, they have communed with that power. They are one with that power. So they cannot fall prey to the dualities of this world, to the evils of this world to the unfairness of this world, because they see it's all coming from God. And why are we born? We're born for the purpose for learning that and for becoming those saints that are one with that infinite source and that infinite light. 
And luckily, these great avatars have taken birth to show us how to do that. And really, a lot of it is simplifying our lives and arranging our priorities correctly. You know, Gyana, Sister Gyana Mata has a book, um, a book of her letters. It's called God Alone. She had on her wall, God Alone. That was her priority, reminded her every day, just God, that's why I'm here. And <clears throat> we talk about, I think in one of our classes, we talk about this jar of, uh, you have uh, golf balls and pebbles and rocks and water, and how are you going to fit that all into the jar? And if you start with the pebbles and the water and the sand and everything, you, it fills up very quickly and you can't get the golf balls in. But the golf balls are the biggest things and they're the most important, so you put the golf balls in first and then you can have the pebbles and the sand and the water and it all fits. Therefore, <laughs> I mean, I know this isn't new to all of you, but seek ye first the kingdom of God and everything will be taken care of. All these things shall be added unto you. God first, God first. Put our priorities on our meditation because it helps us become one with the source of all that is. Then when bad things happen to us, we don't sit around and go, why, why? Who? look at him. Why did this happen? We can see, wow, God has given this to me because I have the magnetism that attracted it because I have something to learn from it. So what is it, God? And why in this form of energy and matter did you bring me this challenge? So, you know, whether our issues are financial or health-related or relationship-related, you know, we think it's easy for children to have this faith, but how can I have this faith? I have real problems. You know, this is, she's not talking about real life here, but we are talking about, or even saints aren't living a real life. They're not living my life. I don't have to go, they don't have to go to the office every day. No, but the saints can see the joy and wonder of every soul in your office and every idea and every solution that is waiting there for every problem. And the answer is always the same. Redirect our energy bring it inside, get still, and listen. Most of us do a lot of talking, but how many of us are really, really listening? We need to listen for God's answer. We need to seek that stillness at the center of each breath, at the center of every atom in creation, is that infinite stillness, and we can tap into it at any time. And so sometimes we have a visualization where we visualize our mind, you know, in our mind is a vast lake, and this vast lake is very, very still, and there's no ripples of thoughts, little waves on the surface. It's just like glass. It's very still, and it extends out for as long as we can see, as far as we can see. And that glassy lake, we can see the image of the moonlight above as a perfect <coughs> reflection. You know, that, and we are that reflection of the light of spirit. God created us as that image, as that reflection of all that he is. And he is constantly shining his light to us for us to still ourselves enough to receive it. And Divine Mother is constantly guiding us and blessing us and sending us her love if we just open our hearts like a child with trust and faith to receive it. God bless you.